Good morning. Welcome to another episode of Creative Juices with me, Chris Purdy. I want to tell you a story about the first time I ever came to Napa, way back in 2001. I was hired as an assistant photographer on an architectural shoot at a cult winery in Oakville. We got up there at about 5 in the morning to watch the sunrise through the fog. The oak trees and vines all lit up magically. Uh, it was an unbelievable experience. And then a month after that, and that was 2001, I found out that I would be moving to Napa. So it was an epic memory for me to this day. Now today, uh, I still am interested in architectural photography and the tools that are available to capture a building that has been designed to harmonize with its landscape, its environment, uh, is a amazing art form. And I hope to do more architectural photography. So today, I'm gonna take you on a tour of a ranch house that uh, I have been visiting for many years and want to show how it has uh, seamlessly fused to its landscape and uh, provides a, a, a creative space uh, for anybody who visits it. So I'm gonna use some of the new tools that I have we're going to check out the place and the surroundings and follow me on a tour. Enjoy. This home was the functional office and living quarters for an active cattle ranch and farm in Napa from around the 70s. The property changed hands and the home became a guest house that accommodated families and clients from around the world for almost two decades. multi-bedroom with a large central area with a kitchen, epic fireplace. This provided a cozy environment. Being surrounded by vineyards helps the relaxing vibe of this house, and when there aren't trucks, tractors, and workers around the house, one can hear turkeys, hawks, and the occasional private jet flying overhead. So I hope you enjoyed that brief tour. Uh, as you can see, I was trying to tell a story about the space and how the architecture uh, conveyed the inside and outside space of that ranch house uh, to provide opportunities. So uh, photographing architecture is about capturing that space. Um, the opportunities lead to a narrative uh, and the photographer tries to tell the story with that narrative. Uh, space, time, narrative, story. Um, architecture and photography have a history, I think, aesthetically, because the word camera actually comes from the word camera obscura, or room, um, camera meaning room. After camera obscura, it was camera photographica, which means light writing, so a room that captures light. This is my miniature room that captures light. The 4x5 camera that I used now just to teach about the history of photography and uh, elements of the camera. You see the lens, you see the uh, base, the back, uh, the glass plate, and then you see the bellows. Um, this is what you could say is a room that changes shape uh, to capture light in many different ways. Uh, the dark room uh, could be set up by an artist to capture light. Uh, and so you're using a room to capture a room. Mm, pretty deep there, Chris. Uh, anyway, this tool is what a landscape artist and an uh, a, uh, a architectural photographer would use. It can compensate for distortion by the lens, uh, and you get infinite detail or focus and can control a lot with it. So this was the standard, but things do change. While some of the images that were captured with cameras like this, of course, I have to mention Ansel Adams and, and others, uh, those images are in our collective memory. They are uh, epic. They are what inspire a lot of art and more photography. But the work of carrying this and the development times and the lenses, the technical knowledge, the physical strength to operate a camera like this was prohibitive, I would have to say, and not accessible to the average photographer. Um, so uh, fortunately today, we do have uh, new tools that are smaller, faster, and provide more uh, opportunity for output 
um, my Canon here uh, can get high resolution digital files quickly and easily. Also video footage with sound. Uh, uh, once you get those high resolution images, Adobe Photoshop, uh, Adobe Lightroom, Adobe Premiere uh, can get uh, anything from a, uh, a phone image, phone video, all the way up to a large uh, format print. Uh, all can be done with a very lightweight tool like this. Uh, in addition, um, a little 360 degree camera. Now this is unique um, and I um, expect to see more. Um, this camera fuses together two uh, fisheye lens, uh, lens effect images and creates a digital file that can be uh, converted into a virtual reality file. So you can actually uh, feel the three-dimensional space looking uh, through one of through an image of one of these cameras. Um, uh, I find this useful. Uh, it can be put onto a phone and uh, really giving a potential client of real estate uh, extra ability to feel a space and experience a space, even if it is virtual from the other side of the world. Kind of amazing way to communicate. And of course, uh, I do consider myself more of a traditionalist. I, I still love my old four x five, but the technology that we see today with uh, drone photography Essentially, I see now a drone as a floating camera. And uh, while it annoys me like a big flying insect in the air, the imagery that comes out of those um, can really draw in the viewers uh, and affords another opportunity to document a landscape. And documenting landscapes is my goal because I believe uh, if we can capture landscapes in numerous ways, it provides creativity for the future generations. Um, I'd like to finish with uh, some footage from my recent trips to Joshua Tree, uh, as well as some Napa footage, because landscapes are where it all starts for me. Uh, my name is Chris Purdy. Enjoy. Thank you for viewing Creative Juices today. We'll see you on the next episode.